me and my mom and dad, we sold the pet store. They took the insurance money that they got and we combined the, the profits together. And we bought this property and we built this originally in memory of my brother. Hello my friends and welcome back to Where Are They Now? In today's video, I'll be giving you the rundown on the Tiger King, Joe Exotic. Let's dive in. Joe is a former chief of police, media personality, businessman, as well as a convicted felon. He's best known for once running the show of the GW Zoo or the Greater Winewood Exotic Animal Park in full, which was operated by him in Oklahoma between 1998 to 2018. But before we get into all of that, let's rewind a bit. Joe was born on March 5th, 1963 in Garden City, Kansas. His birth name is Joseph and he is a son of rich farmers. Although there is no available information about Joe's father, we know his mom's name was Shirley. When Joe was five, he was defiled and violated by an older boy. During his youthful days, his parents relocated to Texas, which resulted in Joe's pursuit of occupation in law enforcement. By 1992, Joe was being given the position of sheriff in Eastville, Texas. Joe moved to Florida a little later on, and it was here where he attempted self-immolation, where he once drove his police cruiser into a concrete barrier. After this near-fatal incident, Joe transitioned into working at a local pet store. His latest reported net worth is estimated to be anywhere between $1 million and $10 million. This post-graduation animal job is probably the most pivotal moment in Joe's life, because it was said to be where his love for exotic animals transpired. Joe had a brother known as GW who lost his life in an accident. Joe was inspired by his love for his sibling to pay tribute to him in some way, so he dedicated his zoo to GW by naming it after him. His zoo was founded on a 16 acre land back in 1997 where at first he was just housing deer and a mountain lion. Presently the count of exotic wildlife is in the thousands. The first two tigers Joe received were back in 2000, both of which he named Tess and Tickles, who soon began to breed. There are said to be more than 187 tigers in his zoo nowadays. Once his fame began increasing, there were loads of individuals and organizations who started speaking out against his business practices. The GW Zoo currently runs on an average 9 to 5 clock. At one point, Joe was an aspiring country singer. During his desired musician days, he recorded several albums and filmed music videos alike, with the appearance to make it seem like he was playing and singing, despite him not writing any of the lyrics nor vocally leading in any of the songs. Still, Joe did release a video for his 2015 song, Here Kitty Kitty, which was designed to get under the skin of his self-proclaimed enemy, Carol Baskin. We'll get into her in just a moment. Before Joe was in prison, he was heavily involved in politics and became an independent candidate in 2017 for president. Here he achieved ballot access in Colorado, as well as established 963 votes, including recorded write-ins nationwide. Joe also ran for governor of Oklahoma. During this, he obtained 664 votes, ending off with a third place finish out of three candidates who were in libertarian primary in 2018. Now, here's where his criminal history begins to seep in. In line with his imprisonment, Joe was arraigned in April 2019 on two separate accounts for his attempt at hiring someone to end Carol Baskin's life. Carol is famously known as the Big Cat Rescue CEO from Tampa, Florida. Joe's him and incident took place in 2018 and the fee to get the job done was $3,000. On the 7th of April of that same year, he was detained in Gulf Breeze, Florida where he was later held at Santa Rose County Jail until the 19th. He was then transferred to federal detention. Following this, he moved to Oklahoma's Grady County Jail. He was convicted on April 2nd for two counts of murder for hire, discovered by the hitman turned undercover FBI agent he hired to do the job, as well as nine violations of the Endangered Species Act and eight violations of the Lacey Act. Joe received a sentence of 22 years locked up in federal prison and in March 2020, his new home became FMC Fort Worth. During the prosecution, it was detailed by a prosecutor that Joe had shot and killed five tigers to make room for additional big cats in the cages. He was also said to have sold tiger cubs in his time and falsified records concerning lions, tigers, and a baby lemur who had either been alleged for donations for exhibition or transported. Either way this outcome was determined, the point was that those animals were being brought up as sold, which was not good for Joe. Since then, Joe has issued a lawsuit against the US federal government at the Grady County Jail on March 17, 2020. He demanded $94 million from the USFWS in full, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. At the time, he was also seeking a presidential pardon from former US President Donald Trump, where he planned to represent himself in the lawsuit. The lawsuit in question specifies damages Joe claims were done by the USFWS of a value of $79 million in regards to the loss of his tigers. Additionally, he asked for another $15 million under the grounds of false imprisonment, as well as the litany of other charges, including the death of his mother. Joe's lawsuit also spewed accusations towards his former business partner named Jeff Lowe, who Joe accused of switching out his medicine for illegal substances and ruining his property. His January 2020 sentence amounted to 22 years in prison for his various crimes of animal abuse and attempted homicide. So in between the mess of getting arrested, 
did, and proclaiming himself as the Tiger King, Joe was once a rising star. And here's how that pertains to what we've learned so far. Joe has done some on screen work in his past, like his appearance on the Louise Theroux documentary called America's Most Dangerous Pets. He also completely banked off his self made show, which showcased his life and played the biggest contribution to his popularity. But it wasn't always a good time for Joe, even then. Authorities had him under investigation once a video of one of his employees surfaced of the accused person striking a tiger with a rifle. It's been reported that no action has been taken since. In this show, we discovered visitors were able to purchase his branded condoms and lotions in the gift shop. I mean, hustle is a hustle, I guess. Anyway, this is pretty much where Carol steps onto the scene as she heavily doubted Joe's suspicious activities and even went so far as to publicly raise questions about it. Carol placed the sole blame on Joe for selling off tiger cubs, taking away tigers' lives, and for literally every other endangered animal offense one human can possibly inflict against them. Now let's just say it was smart of Netflix to pick up Joe's docuseries Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem and Madness as he gained social media buzz and overall public attraction due to the content featured in the series. Its premiere hit the streaming media app slash site on March 20th and was deemed crazier than the entire world pandemic, which is obviously saying a lot. The 7 episode true crime featured show centered around Joe's infamous brand of collecting giant cats in Oklahoma. His other wildcat related money making moves included the use of tiger cubs as props in magic shows and selling merchandise which was animal themed. The docuseries heavily focused on Joe and Carol's sworn enemies relationship. Joe had once accused Carol of murdering her husband and feeding him to her big cats. I guess with the amount of traction these two maintained back and forth, it's almost not surprising he tried to have her killed. Still wrong of course, but not all that shocking anymore. The examination of Joe's exotic animal franchise in Tiger King revolves around their eccentric cast and jaw dropping scandals that range anywhere from polygamy to cults and so forth. As of today, Joe still goes by the sexual orientation of gay and has had four husbands in his time. His first was Brian Ryan, who later passed away from HIV complications in 2001. His others are now known as John Finlay, Travis Maldonado, and the latest but now divorced Dylan Passage. Travis passed away in what was reported to be an accident, which occurred in front of an exotics zoo employee and involved a firearm to his head on October 6, 2017. But before this, the two had a zoo themed wedding ceremony in 2014. Travis and Joe met in December 2013 when a struggling addiction from Travis landed him at the zoo. Load of Joe's employers suggested that Joe take Travis under his wing, where the use of working around animals would help him recover. Witnesses at the time of his death alleged that he removed the magazine out of the loaded firearm and held the barrel to his head, assuring that it wouldn't fire off without the magazine. We of course now know that it did because he squeezed the trigger which resulted in his life being taken. Once Joe had publicly moved on from the tragedy of Travis, his marriage to Dylan came about on November 11, 2017. The two were together up until they announced their divorce in March 2021 having split up somewhere in between that period. Conclusively, the former lover of playing with tigers and feeding crocodiles ended up with a tragic dish of karma on his side. In an era of judgement, Joe's legal team was super confident his prison sentence would eventually be pardoned by then US President Donald Trump that they had a limo waiting outside the prison for Joe. He never got in actually, as the pardon never came. He stayed behind bars after being left off the list of commuted pardons on Trump's last day of being president. However, Joe holds on to hope that current US President Joe Biden will now grant him a pardon. Back in May of last year, Joe revealed his prostate cancer diagnosis on Twitter, again asking for a presidential pardon. He also pleaded with Vice President Kamala Harris to allow him to seek proper medical care, throwing in the claim that he was too innocent and too gay for what was happening to him. A federal court in Denver on July 15, 2021 pressed that Joe should have been given a shorter prison sentence and that he was wrongfully treated in court when they calculated his sentence. According to sources, his sentence should have ranged between 17 and a half to 22 years rather than 22 to 27. The appeals court ordered Joe resentence, which hinted at prompting an early release. He was then moved to North Carolina's Federal Medical Center for treatment while they determined a date for his court hearing for his new sentence. In the end though, Joe was resentenced to 21 years, meaning his sentence was only reduced by a single year, despite his pleas for leniency when he began treatment for early stage cancer. Unfortunately for Joe, it seems he'll have to repent for his sins behind the gates of Earth's above ground hell. Now, that is it for today's WATN. If there are any other Hollywood hotties you'd like to see in our next rundown, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And don't forget to let us know what your thoughts are on today's Where Are They Now video. This was your host, Michaela, and I'll see y'all in the next one.